What is beauty? What is courage? What gives one strength to inspire? Let's talk. Women talk. Anamika strongly believes in the power of education. Only 23 and an outreach officer at Child Reach Nepal, she has already led numerous aid missions after the devastating 2015 earthquake. Women Talk TV travels more than five hours on rocky mountainous terrain to Banskakar, Nepal, and we meet this brave and passionate go-getter who is trying to bring about change in her country. And Amika, can you please tell us what Child Reach is all about? Child Reach is, yes, we have a motto which we say is unlock a child potential. So uh, when we go around the village we, in the schools, we promote a program. It is my school, my voice. The student gets a platform to show themselves regarding their child right. They teach the you know, like elder people what child right is and how, how important is education. And in the other side, we have sports initiative. In many schools, we have seen that only you know, reading books is not enough because there were a huge dropout rate. At first, I came as an intern. I did for nine months, and I was the, you know, the longest intern to be in Child Reach Nepal. <laughs> <laughs> and after that, like Dr. Shiring, as Dr. Shiring offered me a job of outreach officer. So, yes. uh, it's a great honor for me to have a colleague like her who was able to take the lead and able to take an initiative uh, not only uh, taking a lead, but also taking a new initiative and working with the local community, blending with them, organizing, and bringing them together to make something happen in the community. I think I'm, I feel myself blessed to have such a wonderful uh, colleague like her. She is bold. She takes her own initiative. She is a true leader. And once she was taking a lead, like uh, Pakistani doctors, Nepal army, police, and our own volunteers and able to take the lead of places where nobody had been there before. And besides that, she's a very kind and big-hearted lady. And uh, she's simply amazing. So um, tell us about what happened uh, when the earthquake struck and how you were brought to this area. I felt like, you know, it was like, when I was in Kathmandu, like the, the Kathmandu people were not much affected. You know, the, the relief food was really f fastly supplied in Kathmandu, but it was really late in the rural area. They were all expecting from government, that, but the government was not there as well. So yeah, all the help they got from were the organizations. So they were really, it was really happy. In, in some point it was really happy, relief. At some point it was really sad as well. At first we all were cut off, like there were no, there were no network, there were no lights. And after, um, I guess after three days, we all got into a restaurant. It was for the volunteers. So even uh, till then I was intern, till then I was intern. So even I said like, I would like to go to Melamji as well. So yeah, we had 22 volunteers. We all came down to Melamji. And when I saw the first state of Melamji, I was really scared. I was like, oh, even I shouldn't have come here. Like it was so scary. Uh, we didn't have a proper tent to leave, to stay on it. So. It was really challenging. But you led a lot of the missions into the village. Tell us about how that happened. At first, uh, I took around six volunteers along with me and we just went around for the survey. And from the second time, there were more volunteers I had to lead. I had to lead. But there were no problem, you know, like leading the volunteers. They were all friendly, they were all good. So yeah, we all smiled, we all, you know, cracked a joke all around the village and it was pretty cool. We went to, uh, we got a chance to get in a helicopter and go to the Olive Village as well. How do you end up leading this mission? It's, it's not kind of an, uh, it's not kind of like leading. I was not only the leader, for me the whole, the whole volunteers were a leader for themselves. You know, it was not me who giving the direction, that, okay let's go there. You know, they were like, no, let's go somewhere else, you know, the more affected area. And they were like, we, we were like in hand-to-hand -hand process like, Oh, that's wonderful. Well, maybe you should kind of walk down and... Have yeah, sure, sure, sure. Cool. So, Anamika, this is the original school building. Yeah. So, when you first came to the village, to this area, what did you see here? As I first came down in the village, I saw like the building, this building, even I got scared. The teachers were, the teachers were not passing by nearby in this, in this area because of the building. So, the kids must have been very scared. And... Yes, they have no choice, but... They have to complete their classes, so yeah, they go inside. They don't have enough classroom and they don't have enough space. 
This yeah. is the temporary learning centre. Yes, this is the temporary learning centre. So and this is where the students are currently Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's very hot inside. Even we can't sit in, in daytime inside. It's pretty hard for them to you know, just go in and study. Yeah, for sure. There's not even a proper like place for the mm, whiteboard. No. So we're standing on this plot of land now. Yes. What's happening behind us? The structure is really like it's a classroom. So there will be one structure, as you can see here. Yeah. Uh, these two are these two are the area for one structure, and they will divide into two classrooms. And why is it personally so important for you to get these up as soon as possible? For me, it's like uh, it's for getting children back to school, like the way they used to study before. I need that type of energy again back to school, you know. To come to school, for, like finish the education for the better for the better future. It's important for me. Like I want to see them growing. Like because there are so many problems during earthquake, like for trafficking. So that's why I want to see them come back to school and tell their parents to how education is important for them, as as well as for the family. But you, I mean, you're obviously very you know motivated to get them back into school. Yeah. Why do you think you have this passion? For, for, for the children. As I used to live in Kathmandu, I used to see the students like they have got they've got everything they needed. When I came back, the first visit was in uh, the other area of Helenburg. It was really hard to look at that they, they didn't have the proper toilet, they didn't have the proper stationaries. In some area, there are problems with teachers as well. Like they can't afford to bring those teachers here. So I was thinking it's kind of passion to me bring back those things in in rural area. What what is it that you want to achieve like in your life? I would uh, be a, a kind of a village developer, development. I would like to see the village, you know. As you can see now, there are part and part spots of people living around in the village, and I want to see them as a whole. My hopes and dreams to get a better Nepal, better education, better policies. So, Anamika, what is empowerment to you? I would like to give this, those empowerment credits to Child Rich. Like, I got to show my talent, I got to show my passion, I got to show my motivation. And how do you hope to empower the people in Nepal? I need to show them like what am I and what, what kind of what kind of work we can do. Let's be together and let's do it together. So I want to show these people like, okay, come let's let us not not just me, not just an organization, but let's let's develop the village as a whole. I'm not a very good speech, but yes, I would like to show them by doing you know, expressing my work to them so that they can they get motivated and do this. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Anamika. Thank you so I mean, it's, much. it is very inspiring to see such a young woman, like, you know, stepping forward, wow. stepping out of her comfort zone and really doing so much and having so much courage, <laughs> uh, you know, for her people. And I'm really sure that you're going to achieve amazing things for your people. Thank you so much. Thank you. A bold young woman with a big heart, Anamika has made it her goal to unite her country as a family and bring equality to all. She has shown us that her youth has never deterred her from doing what is best for others and continues to inspire a change for her people.